This week, Drew Nelson and I welcome Brian LeBeau, owner of Church Hill's Smoke Shop and Lounge. We have some very interesting topics that relate to the brick and mortar and relate to the industry and who else to have the opportunity to interview than someone who actually owns a brick and mortar cigar shop. So we're going to have a roundtable discussion uh, as to some of the news that has come up. And then in our second segment, we're going to talk about Sticks of the Week. We're also going to talk about a 20 cigar sampler for just $69.99 with free shipping to your door. All you got to do is email me at joeh at stogiegeeks.com to get all of the information. Or if you follow me on Twitter or Facebook, it's already there. Either way, Stogie Geeks, we have an exclusive deal for you. Check it out. It expires September 30th, so you got to get on that if you want 20 sticks for $69.99. And stuff you might need to know. Stogie Geeks episode 341 starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josepa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. So we also have remote Drew, who is remote over in Texas. Look at you, you got some Stogie Geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm all set up for the uh, Stogie Geek uh, mobile lounge. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome to episode 341. I am your host, Joe Hosemper. It is a privilege and an honor to be here. We have a the characters here to introduce to you. First, I want to introduce my co-host, the little doc here from Texas, Mr. Drew Gavin. Just messing around. Anyways, <laughs> hey, what's going on? <laughs> that was Sorry. pretty good. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I'm like, it's Thursday. What the heck am I doing here on Thursday? It's supposed to be Friday. Yeah. You had... You had me for a loop this morning. I'm like, holy shoot, is it Friday already? Yeah. But I lost the game. Nah, everything's good, man. I'm in my uh, fake, uh, what do you call these things? Background changing the least. Are uh, you so, in Zoom or Skype? I'm on uh, Skype. I don't know, virtual, virtual background. Yeah, virtual background. There you go. I'm there in you one go. of those. I would do Star Wars yeah. or something, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> I have yeah. one of me in the plantation field, but it's weird. I tried to use that one, and that one just didn't come up very well. I looked like I was in a in a bush behind. You are in a bush if you're on a plantation <laughs> field. But anyway, right. Right? <laughs> you know, just, just throwing it out there. Just throwing it no, out no, there. No. Um, yeah. Oh, we have someone who uh, is starting to become no stranger to the show. We have right. Nelson over here who's come up with a plethora of topics. Yeah, happy to be back. Really enjoy being here with Drew and uh, Joe. And I uh, hope you guys are checking out the reviews out on the StogieGeeks.com website. I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, you can email me at Nelson at StogieGeeks.com. Tell me what sticks you'd like me to review, and I'd love to do it for you. There you go. And just so you know, if you're looking for the sticks, you go to StogieGeeks.com forward slash. No, StogieGeeks.com. Click on the Stogies uh, section, yep. and all of the sticks of the week should be listed over there. If you're looking for show notes, they will be posted tomorrow or Friday. Uh, StoryGeeks.com forward slash 441, where you have, will have links to, I'm sorry, why am I, 
And tomorrow is Friday. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. This is great. Off to a great start. Coffee's catching up. I'm, I'm getting fired up over here. Johnny, which camera's mine? It's one over there, right? Am I looking done now? There you go. All right, cool. I'm, I'm not in my <laughs> spot. I'm way off because I'm so used to looking at, at it this way. Uh, we don't like change. And today's episode is nothing but change because we're doing it on a different day. And we're doing it at a different time. And I'm sitting in, in the wrong seat. But anyway, Nelson had come up with a plethora of topics and um, some of them do relate to the brick and mortar obviously here on story geeks we uh, try to have a, a balance of brick and mortar versus online sales and finally finally ladies and gentlemen it is my privilege and honor if you've been watching story geeks especially for the past 18 months and I always talk about cigar club radio and all of that stuff this is the gentleman who originally started my sponsorship and he's also the owner of Churchill Smoke Shop and Lounge. Brian LeBeau, welcome to Story Geeks, finally. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Glad welcome. to be here. Uh, we're going to uh, do a roundtable discussion. Nelson's going to bring up a topic. And don't forget, Story Geeks, in our second segment, we're going to talk about the sticks that we've been smoking uh, and, and where we go with that. And then uh, we're all going to just kind of do a panel and uh, talk about that. So, Nelson, uh, without further ado, let, let's get right into it and uh, pick the topic. Yeah, well, actually, I, I'd like to dip into something I actually just read in the news last night. It happened this week. So McAuliffe Cigars has decided to pull out of online retailers, mm. and they're going to go full brick and mortar. So I was wondering from your perspective, Brian, when a company or brand does that, you know, what, what does that say to you? What, how, what, what does that do for your industry in the brick and mortar when a company dedicate itself to, dedicates itself to a B&M like that? You know, I do have a lot of respect for uh, Al for doing that. Um, but i got to be honest with you. Um, internet, there's always going to be internet sales. They're actually growing rapidly right now with the COVID, you know. And a humidor can't really house, you know, I mean, there's so many different kind of cigars. So, and companies do, um, certain companies do price protect their, their brand, you know, for the brick and mortar. So they don't discount it crazy. Um, but I understand internet. Uh, if you're a brand and you want to get, you, you know, increase your rate of exposure, I understand why people go to the catalog, you know. And the, um, you know, my customers, I mean, everybody I know really buys online. Even though my, like, even with my customers, they buy online. You're not going to stop it. Um, and, you know, I feel that they buy more of, like, what you call a backyard cigar online. More your 2 to $5 sticks rather than, you know, and, I mean, and if I don't have it, they'll go online, and, you know, they'll buy a Padron. Or if I don't have it in stock, you know. But I, I really do, you know, I respect Al for, um, you know, supporting the brick and mortar, you know, because that's what basically, you know, this country thrives on is small business, you know? Mm -hmm. mm. So, I don't know if you have any other questions on that. Not, not, not yet. I want to see what, 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 where what, we go. Because you know me, I, I don't, I don't have word economy and I have so <laughs> much, right. so much to say on this topic. Like, and I'm actually kind of pumped that you went with this topic first because, you know, I think it's, 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 it's very relevant today in today's industry. So, Drew, uh, you, you saw the headline McAuliffe is going B&M only. Well, my first thought is, you know, as I as I share with everybody at Highland, was that well, Jeff Bezos is on a the, the what? The Jeff Bezos? Yeah, yeah. Speak is to it, the mic, it, Drew. All yeah, right. what I was saying that it isn't, you know, it isn't, it isn't, it isn't a bad forum to do business on. I mean, so I don't know. I, it was just kind of like, I was kind of like, okay, you know, that's pretty much it, and a blank stare on my face. I mean, why would? Why would you take away a, a revenue stream? I mean, you could do a lot with mm. that that stream. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, like, uh, uh, like our like our guest just said, you know, it, it, you know, if you don't have it, they're going to go online anyways and find it. it, it I, I don't know. There's, we'll, we'll see how that works out for them. I mean, uh, to cut out that that stream though, it seems like. So there is some crossover, right? With what? So between online and brick and mortar. So a lot of the, uh, there are brick and mortars in the country that also sell online. There should be. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. So Brian, based on your feedback of, you know, 
online is never going to go away. Is that something you think brick and mortar should dip into? Because maybe this is a, a different question, but I think it's somewhat related. I was thinking about the advertising aspect, right? Cigars International is like the Walmart of cigars. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. They have right name recognition. People know to go there, even though probably they shouldn't in some cases. But anyway, <laughs> how does a brick and mortar get to – I'm thinking about the advertising and marketing, right? It's hard to get people in to understand – what a premium stick is, mm -hmm. you know, like they might go in there for a, not to knock Gurkha or anything, but maybe they go in for a lower end stick, something less than $10, right? But how do you get them to understand the, the higher end sticks and the quality of those? You got to get them in people's hands, you know? I mean, that's the bottom line. You got to get sticks in people's hands. And if, well, I mean, CI and Famous, they do like those cigar samplers. And, and like I said, you're going to maximize your rate of um your exposure, and it's if us, you know, an Oliva Milano comes in, you never smoked it before, and it comes in a sample pack through CI. Well, I mean, somebody might not want to buy a box; they might want to buy two, you know. And that's where the brick and mortar helps out, right? You know, um, but as going back to what you said about brick and mortars going online, online yeah, um, you have to know. I mean, CI they have big buying power, you know, and for a small shop like us, we don't have that buying power to meet their, um, be competitive with their pricing. So you got to kind of go with a boutique route, you know, and you're going to see a, you know, if a brick and mortar does go um, online, you're going to see more boutique stuff than you will your, your, you know, traditional smokes. Okay. Drew, you have anything else you have to add? No, I mean, it's exactly what Brian just said. You know, I mean, you, you definitely, you know, I I mean, I got, here in Texas, I got CI, like, right down the street. I mean, it's literally five miles. Big place. People go there, you know, uh, mostly beginner cigar beginners go there. Uh, they, they get they get starstruck by the big, you know, monstrosity of a brick and mortar uh, for the most part. I've been in there twice just to kind of look around and poke around and just see what kind of customer service I'd get and, and how much they know, their staff knows about the cigars that are there, and it's it's pretty it's it's a pretty daunting place. I mean, it's like pretty big. It's you're right. It's like going to Walmart, and there's so many products there that you can't see them all. But uh, for the most part, like I said, you know, I I just I just don't get you know cutting off that that stream of of, of marketing and uh, the opportunities. Uh, you know, I, I, we just need more information on it. So. Mm -hmm. Brian, by the way, that place is beautiful. I'm looking at your uh, Facebook page. Thank you. I'm, I'm it's like, a cool I'm spot. Liking, looking at the whiskey sour picture. I skipped Nikki. I saw Nikki. I'm like, yeah, right, yeah this whiskey <laughs> sour looks pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but no, Nikki looks, looks beautiful. But, uh, yeah, pretty pretty neat uh, pretty neat establishment. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking at it right now. I'm just kind of getting familiar with your uh, lounge. So, All right. We're ready to talk business? All right, McAuliffe's in trouble. I will be the first to not kiss anyone's ass and say it, okay? That cigar company has made way too many moves. Let's just count COVID, okay? Since, since March 5th, okay, I have done nothing but announce or, 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 or talk about pivot positions from a cigar company, okay, that is just trying to rattle the baby rattle, okay? I have a little guy. I think I have the youngest. No, Brian does, well, too, with the second one, right? They're, they're rattling the baby rattle when it comes to a business, okay? Because they need to find where they stand. That is such an important aspect of business that I don't really think that they really know where their position is, right? Even with their, their brand-new company. They've been around for three years. They've changed their labels twice, They've talked about the Gomez family. They have two labels now that, that releases the Gomez family. I've had them on the show twice. I've asked for a clear perspective. Actually, I've had them on the show three times. I've asked them for a clear perspective as to the relationship with the Gomez family that hasn't been defined here, that hasn't been defined on their website, okay? And by the way, Rule 101 of Business, which I'm very, very, very shocked about, 
okay? And I think that my, my stance on McAuliffe is they're going for the shock factor more than the business factor because all they've come out with is shocking headlines. Predex. We did a whole stand. Actually, I'm thinking about it now, Drew. We had like eight episodes dedicated to Stogie Geeks uh, on on a McAuliffe subject or other, right? And it's and it's a great way for them to get other podcasts and social media or outlets to talk about them, but they still haven't defined where they stand. Okay, I've asked for a clear definition from Dan President. I've asked Al to come to the microphone numerous times. That didn't happen. Okay, we've had Andy on the show. I've asked for the Gomez thing there. And by the way, room number, rule number one of business is you don't alienate an audience. Everybody goes poo-poo on Holtz. Or everybody goes poo-poo on, on online and whatnot. The bottom line is we all shop online. We're consumers, right? Unless we're the guy or girl who buys gas at the specific gas station every day or, or every time the, the, they, they get gas and, and, and they're very dedicated. Consumers are not like that anymore. Consumers search for a deal. So in the cigar world, everybody's shocked that we don't go to the brick and mortars and we go online. Well, you know, uh, uh, newsflash, if you're looking for a television, you go into your little Google, you type in your Google, and it gives you a shopping list. You can even create on Google and shop, and it'll, it'll rectify the search for you and make it easier for you. Then it can tell you for cheaper. Now, if, if the consumer is basing it upon cheaper, where can I get these olivas or where can I get these gurkhas or where can I get this stick cheaper versus online or the brick and mortar? The answer is almost always going to be the online. However, however, if you're pretty good and you can speak English, you can walk into a brick and mortar, get to know a brick and mortar and make a deal with the cigar shop owner and maybe they're willing to, 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 to cut you into a deal to at least that. Now, is it going to be exactly the same price? No. But at least your your the brick and mortar, you're helping out because that's attached to a family and jobs and and everyone who is employed there. But the bottom line is, you know, they they're alienating they're alienating an audience off the rip, and everybody goes poo 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 on 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 Scars International. Scars International is trying to get into the brick and mortar game. Have we ever stopped and talking about that? Like, Cigars International has been sprouting out in random places with mega superstores, mm -hmm. right? That are brick and mortar. You can actually physically walk into a shop and purchase it. And by the way, they're turning them into destination lounges. How many of us have traveled all the way to Miami via car and stopped at JR's in, 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 in North Carolina? Why? It wasn't to get a freaking deal. It was to, to experience, hey, I went to JR's. I want to experience walking into a brick and mortar. Now, if Cigars International were to open up in that brick building across the street from you, eh, you might want to consider moving. I well, get that. But it's going to be a different shopping experience. Correct. And with that, Joe, i got to be honest with you, is um, when I was in Texas, uh, and Drew can attest to this, underground cigar shop, Perfect example. They moved right down the street from underground. And, you know, I mean, people say in business, you know, competition, competition. But competition is good. Yes. And, you know, and it, it puts your business mind to um, overdrive and say, how can we be different than CI? Yep. You know, and uh, we need to make a customer experience better. We've got to make the staff knowledgeable. We've got to make, you know, the, the product a lot different, more boutique-y. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that's what Underground has done. Underground has proven. Um, they do a great job. Um, but, yeah, we don't have anything like that up here right now. Right. But, but let's say, hypothetically, Scott's International opens up right in front of your place, mm -hmm. right? Perfect. High traffic area, nice brick building in front. You have a visual. The, 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 the health care facility goes right away. Right off the highway. It's right, right off, off the, the highway. highway. They have highway signs. They, they, all that's going to do for you is two things off the rip. Number one, it's going to make that street a destination for cigars. Good news is... It'll drive more traffic. Yeah, you live on the street, right? Mm -hmm. And if you don't believe me, why is Burger King across from McDonald's? Why right. is Bessie in here in the Northeast or yeah. Honeydew or another donut shop across from one of the big chains, right? right? That's called... In economics, we call that spillover effect, right? So in other words, if 
a coffee shop opens across the street from a Dunkin' Donuts, they can make enough revenue from the spillover of the drive through because the consumer, wait a minute, has to be at work at 8 o'clock. And it's 7.30. And they look at the Dunkin' Donuts line and they're like, oh, God. Let me just go across the street because I need a coffee. Right? That's absolute substitution. They bought a coffee. They didn't buy a brand. They bought a coffee. And then what if they try it and they like it? Right? That's why a lot of gas stations have put Dunkin' in there to make it convenient and all of that stuff. And, you know, we don't shy away from the Dunkin' Donuts person who just wanted a coffee. And maybe they're real loyal to, to, to Dunkin' Donuts. But that day, there's enough spillover effect when you, when you do your economic indicators so that if the best thing that can happen to your shop, I'm still on point one, right? If CI were, were to go across the street is that, number one, it would bring awareness to the cigar industry that, holy cow, we have a destination. The good news is all the other 38 shops in Rhode Island are not on that street, only you are. Right. So, so that's super cool, right? Secondly, is it forces you to identify your position in the marketplace because there is room for everyone. Mm -hmm. There are some people, they ain't going to carry, they're not going to carry the 685 Woodlawn you have in there. Mm -hmm. There's no way they're going to carry that. They're not going to carry the Caldwell well, Mad, Mad Mofos. They might not have the HVC Black Fridays that are coming out. All these uh, sought-after sticks. I mean, you're already selling Black Fridays before it even came out, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Because, and by the way, you're going to keep taking orders until they say, I can't get no more boxes, right? right? Yep. That's, that's making your business a resource. That's a smart move, and, 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 and I guess to be, right? You can make that resource online. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to bring awareness, and it's going to do that. And, and I think by alienating an audience, again, it was kind of like when McAuliffe came up with, with the Predex, right? With the Predex, Predex. And we, we did a whole episode on it, analyzing that for, for businesses. And by the way, Al and company are coming out with great ideas. I don't want to go poo-poo on them. Uh, as much as I did, but realistically speaking, you should not alienate an audience, and you should not be the baby with the baby rattle crying. Give me, give us things. Define where you are. Tell the legacy of the Gomez story if you're sticking with it. Define it on your website. Educate your consumers. They do a phenomenal job with their ambassador traffic. But let's face it, ambassadors. The, I, I mean, what, maybe one-third are really active, and maybe a third of those really actually smoke McAuliffe's, right? And again, I'm not picking on them. They want to be bold with the statement. I'm going to be bold with, with, with the commentary. It's just it is what it is. And I think when you keep making these headlines, they're going to put themselves into a state where they're just going to start to really, really tick people off. I'm not worried about ticking people off in the industry. Ticking people off in business, right? Like ticking. Now, now I've talked to brick and mortars who support them wholeheartedly and do very well with them. They have a whole list on their website. Okay, so you can go to McAuliffe Scars and check out who's who's really supporting them. But let me tell you something. Those are the those are the brick and mortars who chose to educate their audience. On McAuliffe cigars, so or else they they would be sitting on the shelf like everyone else. But I can tell you, here in the Northeast, the word on the street is that like they're not well accepted here. Uh, a lot of that probably is representation, sales rep, all of that. I'm not even blaming COVID because they've been around pre-COVID, right? Uh, they they just been making all these headlines. And the point of my conversation is that you should not alienate an audience you should not go poo poo on a big brick and mortar you have to define your space just like stogie geeks right stogie geeks covid hits everybody's on zoom 16 new podcasts come up the, to me they all look the same because they don't have the same production as some of the big ones like oz and like cigar authority right they don't have a production right hats off to uh johnny and and crew here and you know, they're just on Zoom and they're doing that. Those podcasts are either going to develop and flourish and be on for a track record of time like us, or they're going to go away. I'm not crying because there's new, there's new podcast people out there. What am I doing? I'm defining our space. 
right? I'm going to find that space. We're putting Nelson on the show. He's writing stuff. He, he's probably going to do some more writing and, and, and stuff like that. He's going to develop content. So now when you go to the store, you, so we're putting together a strategy, right? Drew's been here for a year already. We got other stuff coming up in the pipeline with Story Geeks, other super cool topics that, that, that are coming up and, and, and stuff like that. And so you have to define your space. And I quite and, – and I've had the, 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 the privilege to be interviewed on the McAuliffe podcast, right? And by the way, everything I told you here is exactly what I said there. Cause that, cause they were asking us, oh well, what about you know some advice you're gonna give us? I was like, you guys gotta define your space. You gotta define your space as to where you are. And now, more importantly than ever, you gotta do that without a PCA or an unorganized PCA when we all get vaccinated and can fly again and go meet in 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 in, in big crowds, right? Post COVID, they gotta get over the pl- the um, the uh, uh, Predex. Uh, there because that that for the next two years is no longer warranted so you're not going to do that right uh they they got us they still got to define the relationship with the family and now they alienated an audience i mean what do you think drew am i off my rocker no i mean you're absolutely right and that's what that was my whole take on this thing was like it was a big question mark because i was like what are you doing i mean again you know i i just don't get it you know it's it's you know, uh, to have online presence everywhere, especially now, is is now you just this is where you kind of hone in your skill and and your set skills and just become more broad. You know, uh, broadband. You know, have other things available. Or go through the process of highlighting shops. These are these are discussions I'm having with shop owners here in Texas. You know, I go to CI to do homework, and then I go to the the brick and mortar right down let's just say 800 feet away from them and and basically give them some homework and say, well, this is what you got. Okay. Your humidor is not their humidor and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Your customer relations is not, is not mirrored at all. You have a better presence, you know, in, in, in that. And you're also already in the community and and have been in the community. And it's great to have them there because they're like you said earlier, they're, they're a great destination, Mm -hmm. but then, but then people go, Oh, you don't want to go kick back in more comfy atmosphere or be around my colleagues i'm going back to my other place but you know it's kind of a, i've been there and done that if no one's sitting in your brick and mortar shop create a better atmosphere right right it's right. that it's that it's that symbol I, I mean you know some some brick and mortar shops here in rhode island like to focus on freaking biscotta bread and ravioli like that's in the, that's in their email list like like it's all about food it's nothing about cigars this cigars in the name, and they're emailing me. They haven't defined their space yet, right? It's crazy. And Nelson asked Brian, well, what do you think about that, right? What do you think about that? That's great. If I were a brick and mortar, and I've been one before, right? Different times, we all know that, right? But if I were a brick and mortar, right? The, at, the, at the end of the line, and Brian, if I'm way off, you just tell me I'm way off. But at the end of the line, you want to sell boxes and make your customers happy. That's correct. And if McAuliffe or, or Gurkha... Is or isn't part of that uh, that equation? That's a special relationship between you and your customers. Mm-hmm. If you only sell Gurkha, because everybody goes poo poo on Gurkha, everybody goes poo poo here in Northeast on McAuliffe, right? A lot of people go poo poo on Alec Bradley's another one, right? Right? They all, you know, all you know, they they they, 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 they the brands change, they just change. Let me tell you something. There's it's up for the brick and mortar to educate his or her audience and make them a resource. Okay, and if they're not doing their job, why should a cigar vendor alienate an audience? I don't think that that's going to make you want McAuliffe in, in your shop or not, whether they went brick and mortar exclusive or not. No. Right? Because not for nothing, I'm doing a, like a mental inventory of your shelf. Other, uh, you know, 10 sticks you probably can't get online, but let's, let me be safe and say 80% of your humidor. Just like next door, Havana Cigar Shop, eighty percent of their humidor you 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 can buy online. You can, but um, like McAuliffe, what I would do with McAuliffe is instead of, like you said, alienating them from their customer base or a potential customer base, I would have price protected it. Still get that exposure, right. but price protected. You know, I carry eighty, like you said, eighty percent of my humidor is brands you can buy online, but I stick to brands that price protect their product online. Mm-hmm. 
where, I mean, and don't get me wrong, take Rocky Patel. Um, Rocky Patel, you can great, get great deals online, and, but people still come into the brick and mortar and ask for Rocky Patel. Yep. You know. Yep. It's just, it, I mean, it's the same. We 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 all buy online. Uh-huh. I mean, you know, and 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 by the way, as a, since when has premium cigar company has said you have to go exclusive brick and mortar? Now I'm all pro brick and mortar. Don't get me wrong, but it, it, you, I, I would never alienate a online company. For example, one of our promotion, perfect example right here is Holtz. Right, perfect example. We got a promo, sixty nine ninety nine. You want you want twenty sticks olivas sent to your doorstep sixty nine ninety nine. There you go. Makes great 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 package. You get a brick of sticks. Super cool. Email me at joe h at geeks dot com. Right. I mean, you know, I, I, you're not alien. You don't alienate an audience. Now, if you said, hey, Joe. I want to freaking do 10 sticks, and it's going to be freaking 39.99, no, whatever the number is, and you can make that work for your business. I do that too, mm-hmm. because it's like it's like why wouldn't you? Why would you alienate an office, a uh, 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 a a audience? I think we're saying the same thing, right? I think, and we talked about experiences, and I think you hit on that earlier. Oh, I mean, Brian. that's what your brick and mortar is all about. Experience. That's what your brick and mortar is all about, right? Um, and, and I think it does drive, and I think you also hit on this. It forces the brick and mortar. It uh, maybe in some cases it doesn't. You're just a different experience in general. Well, right. I mean, it's all about you know what is a cigar lounge about? It's about camaraderie. It's about the atmosphere. It's about making. It's networking. And like Drew said, you know, and if you're a new cigar smoker looking for that, and you're going into a place like CI, those humidors are so big they get overwhelmed. People get overwhelmed looking at you know two thousand, three thousand boxes of cigars. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. Yeah, but I'm not even talking about the large, because um, somehow we got into the large brick and mortar. I'm talking reta- uh, retail yeah. brick and mortar versus online. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. It's just different experiences. It is. And I think, I think we all said at some point, people do both. They end up doing both. It's, so I it's agree. our right as consumers to do both. So I right. agree with you. You know, why, why would you want to cut off that part of your market? Right. Right? It's the best... I don't want to say free exposure, but I mean, yeah. it's free exposure. I'm I'm starting to become a believer that they're into shocking headlines over content. And you know what that tells me, business-wise? Just get <clears throat> to, we we. You saw the Wizard of Oz, right? You remember when the witch said, "This is it," and you turn your hourglass upside down? It's the hourglass. They 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 need they need a phenomenal pivot point phenomenal pivot point to bail themselves out of this. I mean, wicked phenomenal. By the way, McAuliffe, Joe H. StoryGeeks.com, you're more than welcome to jump on any time you want to to defend that position. And you're welcome if you want to have a meeting off air as well to discuss pivot points. I'm very shocked at that behavior. Other than it's just shocking behavior, which gets all podcasts talking about it because I couldn't go through uh, Facebook without hearing about it the day it came out. And the day it came out was Friday at uh, 2 p.m. No, yeah, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They did a whole press release announcement on it. Um, They sent out the press release and then they did their own podcast version on their Facebook Live to talk about that and then talk about the commitment there. And it's times like that that I wish I wasn't doing Stogie Geeks at the same time there live because I would have been like, like, oh, we need to get on this show and like, you need to stop this. You need to stop this behavior now. Like, stop it. Like, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's not, um, it's, it's too noisemaker. And I think that you, you need to focus on content and you better do it quick or else the, where there'll be like some of the other companies, if you go back in the Story Geeks archives, they're, 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 they're just not around. Take a page out of JC Newman's book. <laughs> yeah. He's been around for 100, he's been around for 100 right. plus years. So. Right. You don't, uh, you're you know, doing something, right? You know, everybody, you yeah. know, oh, online, online. How many people buy Arturo Fluente online? Because they're cheaper than some of the, the, than some of the brick and mortars. Okay, you ain't going to bang on JC Newman's door. That's the deal. The customer consumer relationship is so special. Not only in the premium cigar industry, in any industry, it's so special. And to alienate that, it's it's just crazy. We should go next subject because I, I I could talk till freaking five o'clock on this. 
Well, let me just say this. Oh yes, go for it. I'm sorry. Yeah, let me let me just say this. Like you know, one of the other be you know one of the other things, one of the other markets that have hit us recently since COVID, especially during COVID, has been the online uh, cigar uh, club. And now I'm I'm up to three. I actually belong to three of those clubs because not only do they offer me a whole different genre of special cigars and things of that nature from major brand major brands and boutiques but it's just so easy to get cigars in the mail it's nice it doesn't really break the bank and i still have bank to go to the cigar brick and mortar and spend money there and still be happy because i just have you know introduced myself to cigars that i've other otherwise wouldn't have even looked at uh through my club memberships and then uh, now i go to know me over at uh, at the at the lounge and just let him know hey this cigar is awesome here have, have, have a go at it and let's talk about getting this into our lounge i do the same thing to to to, 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 to brian all the time i'm always coming into brian's shop with some cockamamie freaking stick <laughs> idea you know what i mean i mean i've been doing it since 2014 since since, since i met him you know what I mean? And there are some he says yes, and there are most he says no, because he knows his audience, and it's that simple. It's that simple. He knows his audience, right? And, you know, but I'm like, oh, this stick's great. Well, oh, you should do that. But, you know, again, he knows his audience, and and you'd be surprised how many brick and mortars don't even know their space. You know, here we are saying, you know, McAuliffe and, 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 and other companies need, need to define their space. Brian knows his space, where, where he's at. And, uh, you know, if, if, if he wasn't, if he didn't know where he was at, you know, there, there'd be seats in the lounge. And the last, last couple of years I've been there, the seats are kind of scarce. And now with COVID, they're really scarce. They're but, really but, 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 like, you know, then there are people who go outside and, yeah, it's cool here in September, but what are they going to do in April? I mean, in, uh, in, in November and December, you know, when it's freaking 20 degrees out, you know, that, that's... That's tough, you know, and, and I mean, and, and, and you know how I know that when I say that there's, there, there, there's space hard to find in your lounge? If someone's getting ready to go, they'll say like, hey, man, after this, I'm leaving. You can have the seat, whatever, and then you can and you do your thing. And, and, and so we're all aware of everyone's surroundings, especially with, with, this, with this COVID pivot that we're all going through in business. And, um, you know, it, 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 it's been more relevant, obviously, with, with, with COVID here, but but. Pre-COVID, you can't get a seat at your bar. Can't can't get a seat at your bar at all. Which is which is testament of you knowing your audience. Because not like you're the only shop that's within a, a five mile radius. Right. You know what I mean. So and there's thirty eight, not seven other choices. Yeah. <laughs> Soon to be thirty eight other choices in Rhode Island that you can go to. <laughs> and then there you go. So all right, Nelson, bring up another topic. Sure. Well, Brian, you mentioned uh, boutique cigars, and I've I've noticed, and I even for myself. I've increased the amount of boutique cigars I'm consuming um, and even getting into it more and more. I'm wondering if, if you've seen an uptick. Has it stayed the same around boutique cigars during yeah, COVID? Yeah, I mean, in boutique cigars, that's what I kind of I mean, asked JoJo. JoJo's been with me since, you know, for at least six years. I've had the shop for almost eight years. And I started off with boutique stuff. And, you know, you still have to carry Monte Cristo, your Romeo and Juliet, your Padron. Um, I had a shop down the street that carried mostly your main brand core stuff. So I had to get different. You know, we had to be different. And the boutique stuff has been growing over the past eight years. Um, but the boutique stuff, and JoJo will attest to this, you have to get that stick in people's hands because they don't know about it. Right. You know? And and that's where going back to like an online presence or the forums or clubs, that's where you're going to get that stick in people's hands. Um, and if you ask, you know, cigar owners, cigar manu like um, line owners, right? The biggest problem today, or I guess you know, ever, is trying to find reps or brokers to broker brands. There's just so many out there. Um, when I deal with cigar brokers they broker eight nine ten lines wow. well after the fourth fifth line you, you've already capped your budget you know so and then you have to pick and choose as a cigar owner what you think people would like but again you have to get those um, sticks in people's hands do you have because i agree with you i think there's more buzz 
I don't want to say the industry, but social media and the social circles, there's more buzz around the boutique cigars. Are people coming in and maybe not saying, I want a boutique cigar, but hey, do you have something different? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I and that's how you get stuff in you know those those people's hands. If I don't have what they're looking for, and this goes back to JoJo's statement of where the staff has to know about cigars because you have to kind of gear them into something else that's comparable to what they are used to smoking, but it might be a boutique blend that you know, and he'll might go off of say Romeo and Juliet and go on to a Caldwell you know Blind Man's Bluff. Um, Connecticut. Connecticut, you know? <laughs> not the Madero. Yeah, no, not the Madero. Especially from Romeo and Julieta. <laughs> Just to clarify. No, because the reason being is you have to match the, the, the rapid binder filler of the classic facing that they like. And then, you know, say, well, you know, this is from the same region. Uh, it's smaller batch. Try it. See if you like it. Right. You know what I mean? And, 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 and that's, a big, that's the beginning of a beautiful relationship. And I talk about this a lot where, you know, it, it, it has to be a relationship with your... Your your tobacconist, your your local shop, right? It doesn't mean I don't buy online, right? I have a relationship with Brian. I buy boxes off Brian. I buy sticks off Brian. I go drink in his establishment when I can. Okay, cool, right? But I, if I have a freaking sweet deal online, then what am I going to do? You know what I mean? And and, and, and us consumers have the You're right to do that. You're a consumer. You know, and we can't tell you where to spend your money, right. how to spend your money. You know, but you can fight for the money. You can fight for you the money. You can fight Correct. for the money. Right, which is that's what business is running. You, you know, a lot of business owners. I, I see this even outside of the industry, where you know, because in 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 my business, uh, outside of Security Weekly, we deal with small businesses. It's like they don't even fight for their space. They don't even want to define their space. It's like uh, this is crazy. Like like you have to go out there and and make improve yourself to make your consumer want to spend money with you yep. and, and have them excited about spending money with you. Yeah, and I think that goes back to that experience, right? It goes back to the experience. And, and what Brian said about having, you know, one of the, I'm sure we've all experienced this. You go into a retail shop. Hey, you know, you have anything you recommend? Yeah, I don't really know cigars. Oh, it's like, gee, what the yeah. hell are you doing, even doing working in here? Right, right, right. right. You got to have That's knowledgeable a, yeah. staff yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And, 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 and you have to have staff to get it. And, and like all employees, you got a handful of employees, five, ten employees uh, at a local brick and mortar. Some of them get it, some of them right. don't. And, and that's, just, that's just the way it goes. You can't, you know. But, again, that's up for the brick and mortar owner to set the, set the bar right. Like, okay, while you're sitting here, you should probably be reading about some of the sticks that we often carry. Right. And when I come back in a week, I want to know five sticks that you chose now. And then in a week, you tell me about those sticks. And if you do that over the course of a month, they could blow through a humidor in, in, in two, three months. Right. Mm -hmm. And now they, they, they now become a resource. And that's the problem because some business owners, even this happens when at the boutique where unless they're at not at, if they're not at the event or not in the shop, the sticks won't shop, sell. And it's like you know you gotta you you built a business for yourself, but you built a job for yourself. You didn't make your sticks a resource. Arturo Fluente, although they had a hundred and change year head start, other than the boutiques or Padron or Romeo and Julieta, even Gurkha, right? You have all these head starts there. So you're going on tradition, knowledge, exposure, experience. I started smoking Romeo and Julieta with my dad, therefore I'm going to have a cigar today. I'm thinking about my dad, so I'm going to go into Church Hills and ask for Romeo and Julieta. Oh, they don't have them. Okay, great. Uh, let me smoke something from at least the same region or something like that. Now, some will say, oh, I, mean, I got to have Romeo and Julieta. That's fine. Right. Uh, that, that's the person who uses the card to go to freaking stop and shop gas tank or drive 14 miles to, to go save 10 cents on gas. You know what I mean? Yeah. Me, I, I, I drive my car and when it gets to a certain point, I see a gas station, I pull in. No, I think you know you're spot on. Like, I, you know. There's always pe you, there are people, and I'm sure Brian experiences it, they're never going to change what they smoke. No, they come right. in, they know what they like. Mm -hmm. right. But I think JoJo, he's right in that, and this goes back to what I was asking Brian earlier about the ad. Like, and when I say advertising, I don't mean advertising your shop. <coughs> I mean no, advertising, advertising your humidor. humidor. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yep. And that's, that comes back to knowledgeable people, the experience. Um, but so the other thing I was going to ask you about, and I have my own perception of this, but I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to taint your answer. 
you said you've been in business for eight years. Female smokers. Yep. Have you seen an increase, decrease? Um, I would the say years? there's an increase. Um, they were at one time the fastest growing smoker is oh, wow. the female. If you go down south, I think you see a lot more female smokers than up here. Um, but they're getting more u into it. Um, I mean, they all start off on the, the flavored stuff. They all like the flavored stuff, you know. Yeah. But yeah. I, yeah, I, I, yeah. Go ahead, Drew. Right, go ahead. No, go ahead, no, Drew. I was going to say, even in Texas here, we, you know, our, our female smoker, our female smoking population has grown exponentially because, just because they have now understand that it's not, you know, it, it's inviting, like our lounge um, prestige cigars and tobacco in Bedford. It's so inviting. It's so nice. I mean, the decor is made. We know me has, has, has taken that visual and, and made it friendly for the women to come, want to come through. Uh, we have American Airlines, one of the lar the largest airline company in the, United, in the world. And they're, I mean, we get a lot of their CEOs and some of their, you know, middle management women come through there now. And they just, because they've heard about how nice and comfortable it is. And they've actually come in and go, hey, I smoked the buddies Padron, uh, you know, 1926 and liked it. And I like to, you know, uh, discover more sticks in that region. And it just goes from there. I mean, but uh, here in Texas, and like you said, down south, Louisiana, uh, get into uh uh, the Carolinas. I know Atlanta. And, Atlanta yeah, has big Atlanta, female yeah. presence. Yep, and it's just it's just it's wonderful. I mean, it's it's great. It's a great segment. It used to be a really fat, you know, really. We used to get a lot more traffic in there prior to COVID, only because I think they were just wondering what the guys <laughs> were doing in these cigar <laughs> lounges for hours. <laughs> so yeah, uh, but yeah, no, it's it's definitely a great segment uh, here in, in Texas. Yeah, I mean, we do definitely see an increase up here. I mean, again, what is a, a cigar lounge all about? It's it's about atmosphere and networking, right? So where else better place to network? And if you're a woman, you know, rank going up the ladder and trying to get up the ladder, then you're going to go to a cigar lounge and with whoever and try to network, you know? Yeah, and, and I frequented Brian's um, shop as well, and I've definitely seen, especially more than other shops I go to, um, and then that could be an, a, a tribute to your, the experience you've created there and, and the comfort level that's there. But I definitely see more women there than I do in other shops. And I've seen more women than I've seen in the past mm -hmm. smoking cigars. Like where in the past I've gone to a lounge, it's all men, you know, three years ago, four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd say in the last two years, I've seen an increase in um, females going to cigar lounges and just sitting Enjoying a cigar with the rest of us. I, th I, th I think there's been an increase for sure. Yeah. Uh, I know some lounges have tried to focus on doing a ladies' night where ladies get a little percentage off a stick and doing that Free there. Drinks. I have mixed feelings about that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like alienating us, again, alienating a certain group. Like, right. okay, so if I'm Joe, I have to pay 100% of the stick. But if I'm Josephine... Uh, I got, you know, I get a little bit of a discount in the same time. You alienating groups. I get the idea to have more woman camaraderie and all of that. But but camaraderie starts from within, right? You either people either want to be around you or not around you. You know what I mean? I mean, I remember God in your shop mm -hmm. was where I met Paul Azadorian, which led to the transition into Stogie Geeks. We did a Jose Blanco seminar, and in the words of Jose Blanco, the worst thing about a cigar lounge is smoking one a cigar next to an asshole. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, so it's like, you know, and 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 if there's a group of women who want to come in and do all of that, again, I encourage them talk to the brick and mortar owner and say, hey, can we have a little section and stuff like that? Can we come in and do that? There, the, most brick and mortars are very accommodating for sure. Of course, it's Be yeah. been my experience because again, they want to position themselves uh, 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 as well and and develop a better relationship. Before Drew, you have a couple more minutes. Yeah, yeah, go cool. Because Nelson's got a fascinating story about a lever. I know. I heard, I've heard. Oh, tell yeah. me about it. Sure. Oh, it was, uh, it was, wait a minute. I wasn't done. Semicolon reinventing the wheel. Go on. Re <laughs> wasn't I, done. <laughs> I assume you're talking about the QR code. Uh, no, no, no. I'm talking about the, the, the process of what the QR code does. But go ahead. Sure. Uh, so Oliva's announced, uh, I think it was the end of August, but I picked up on it last night, uh, that they, in their Milano V boxes moving forward, and it's already started shipping, they're including QR codes that you can scan 
And apparently they're specific to the box, not just the cigar. Mm -hmm. And you can get information on... <laughs> he's jumping at the pits to jump in on it. Oh, I've been jumping at the pits since I walked in, <laughs> since I walked in G Unit Studios Listen, today, we can dress anyway. you up and call you Josephine if you want. No, no it's I'm up good. to you. All right. <laughs> So, <laughs> you scan the QR code, you get information about the roller, the factory, obviously the blend, wrapper binder filler and all that. Um, and, and more. And more. There's videos, uh, factory tours of the factory it was made in. So, it's some new shtick that they're doing, you know, to make the experience a little different for cigar smokers. But I'm sure Joe's going to enlighten us with his thoughts it's on awesome. it. It's awesome. It's awesome. I think it's awesome. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this, yeah, this is all pretty neat i mean that just puts again i mean you just created content for your cigar smoker there you go i mean it's just neat i mean so why not keep that wheel going just keep inventing things like this especially during these times here we go and these are things that people want obviously they didn't just say oh you know let's just start doing this this is something that they have actually looked at because yeah. i'm going to that now with a lot of the cigar uh brick and mortars here in, in texas they're asking me, hey, go over there, do some <laughs> incognito homework, and bring it back to us and tell us what you don't, what you like and what you don't like or what you want. Yeah, you got to test want. the market. Yeah. Ooh, so that's, that's pretty Who's giving you much notice cool. like that? I hope not a, a business owner. Well, yeah, you know. Externally centered. That's one of JoJo's no-nos. <laughs> that's, one of the, that's one of my no-nos. You do not run a business being externally centered go see what other people are doing and then it's try just, to copy it no 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 no. what they're looking what they're looking the data they're looking for is just what what's next you know what's the next you know what's the next level i mean we got underground here that's building a beautiful who just built a brand new beautiful uh lounge uh you know for for his for his people and 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 to gravitate more people to them we're doing the same thing in Bedford, Texas. We're doing that over at Prestige. We have expanded. We've put in a bar. We've put in a brand new humidor. We're putting in freaking beautiful furniture that you'll, I, I can't wait to show you guys the photos of this next month. This place is phenomenal. It makes Rocky Patel's burn basically burn to ashes. It's funny. That's how nice our, that's our, that's our nice our place is going to be. I'm just saying. But that, that's just what it is. You gotta be next level. You gotta keep going. QR codes, that's awesome. I like to know who that roller is. He's rolled my he's rolling my cigar, you know, in the Oliva factory. Why not? That's pretty that's pretty neat. You know, the blend to get more educated about the blend, the, the farm the leaves came from and all that other, you know, geekish stuff. I mean that that's just pretty fun. Brian, do you not? have anything you wanna add to this? So <laughs> a couple years ago I was in um IPCPR, well, PCA, right? I know where you're going. And <laughs> I know exactly where you're going. I, I just have to look at you. Go ahead. Go um, for it. You know, I, it was different. Talk to me, Goose, because I have never been to an IPCPR, although other podcast hosts post on social media that I talk about IPCPR and PCA, but yet I'd never been to a show. That is a special relationship between you, shop owner, and um, the manufacturers. That is not a, a podcast. If they do their job all year round, uh, there's no need for us to interview about what the latest sticks are. They send us in our email. But anyway. So a couple of years ago I was there, and they used to do events, okay? And they, they rolled this out. Oliva did, okay? And they rolled it out. Three years ago. Three years ago. Three years ago. And <laughs> it was a virtual reality. So what they were doing was, the concept was, if you did an event with a lever, they could bring this virtual reality um, headset, and you can actually go and tour the fields and the rolling uh, process and the drying barns and stuff like that. I mean, I thought it was pretty cool. It was something different. Mm -hmm. it was Is that something that would be in the brick and mortar shop? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like, every rep would have a virtual reality um, headset, and when you did an event, they would, you know, you sat down and it was about, I don't know, maybe a three to five minute video of a virtual reality of uh, tour. a yeah. tour. And, you know, I think, you know, they were thinking Isn't outside the box, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, that's exactly where I was going, right? Exact, exactly where I was going. That's why I use the semicolon. Uh, and this is news, right? With the QR codes. Uh, all they, you need a lighter? Yeah. 
Okay. Oh, right. So, uh, you know, uh, all they did, and and if they if they upgraded the footage, it's great. First of all, I think it's a phenomenal idea. Right? I think it's a phenomenal idea. I was actually at two events that did the virtual reality. Again, one of the special relationships you get when you develop a special relationship with your brick and mortar. Right? You go there. The lever's there. You have them. You buy a Milanio. You smoke it. You hang. You put the virtual reality set uh, on. You go there. And, dude, it's super cool. It's got a deck. I have the images still in my head. They're still ingrained. And you look. And the freaking leaves are moving, mm -hmm. and the rollers are working, and and and, and there's rappers all, all around, and, and it's such a cool experience. I thought it was wicked awesome, and you can move, and I'm actually like, hold on, like I'm testing, I'm looking up at the sky, I'm looking down right. at the ground. Yep. It was an awesome experience, and to bring that into a virtual reality is so awesome. Right, yeah, it was definitely outside. I mean, the box. wine. I'm, as much as I'm into cigars, I'm into wine. Wine vineyards have been doing that, especially the boutique ones, right? Have been doing that a lot because they, they go against the... It's the same argument. They go against the mass-produced wine and all of that. They're like the smaller vineyards. And educating your consumer, or i.e. giving your consumer an experience, is so awesome. I think that it's really cool that, that they did, but... They came up with something, but now instead of being available to the brick and mortar, it's available to anyone who had purchased a box. And if the boxes tell different stories, I mean, there was a wine thing. I think it's like 19 crimes where there's an app, and the, you, yeah. you take a picture of the app, and the, the guy or gal who's on the app right. talks to you and tells, like, that's so interactive, and that's super cool. Uh, by the way, from a security perspective, it's also a way for them to collect data. Uh, in in regards to get your email and all of that stuff there too, so there's nothing wrong with that. With 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 with, with getting news and building a database, I th I think it's super cool. It's not super innovative because they've done it before, but I think it's it's such it's 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 well needed, uh, especially during these times. Now, Oliva is reminds they're one of those companies. Let's let's talk about the business aspect of it now. Oliva. They're, they're just kind of riding their ride. They're internally centered. They haven't come out with anything new in a world where we're all chasing new or we're all chasing different. And there's nothing wrong with that. They are focused as to where they, as to where they want to be and who they want to be. And when I speak to the rep or when I, when I get press releases from them, they're, they're, I think they're well-defined as to where they are and who they are. Mm -hmm. And I think that... Uh, if they ever came up with something super exciting or new, right? Um, but maybe they don't have to, right? But if you talk about the business model, maybe they're still riding out the ride because the Melania, which happens to be a stick of the week, uh, ironically, um, this week, it's crazy how we don't do show prep and like it comes it together. It's just, it's amazing, which is tells me it happens with, with, with Drew <laughs> all the time. I don't even have to call you guys and I get like the results, right? It's super cool. Um, you know, and, 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 and I think that they're well positioned to gather that data to give the experience. And for you story geeks out there, if you've ever had a chance to scan a QR code and do that, Email me at joeh at storygeeks.com. I'll share your experience on the story if you want to write about it. Uh, there you go. Uh, you can email me. I'll share it with, with Drew and Nelson. Or you can email all, all, all three of us. Because I'm going to ask you details about it to find out. I wonder if it's the same video or if it's it not. It might be. I don't or, know. Or if it's not. They, the, news, <laughs> the, new, the press release was specific that it was specific to the box. So it's not even specific to the line. It's specific to the box. Yeah, but, but, but for those of us who've been in a factory, they go again and they say, okay, Tuesday and Thursday, we're going to roll these boxes. Right, right. When, uh, yeah. That was Tuesday, you know, and, and stuff like that. But, but you might have rolled box A, and Brian might have rolled box B, because according to the press release, it's going to have the roller in the video. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah. I, I, I mean, if you go to J.C. Newman's YouTube page, right, you can in, you can they have like three two and a half minute segments of employees, the, like an employee. It's not employee of the month, but like highlighted employees, and and it's amazing, right? Talk about like solidifying your place, right? right? It's amazing how yeah, well my father worked here, so I worked here, and this is like a woman now, right? So like her father worked at the J.C. Newman factory. Now she works at the J.C. Newman factory. They they're doing their thing. They live in South Florida, well Tampa. Kind of Tampa, South Florida, yes. <laughs> right? And, 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 doing their, and, and they're doing their thing, and you get to know them. And I think that in this digital age, 
us stogie geeks definitely, but our consumers want that. Like, well, it's something different, right? It's definitely something different, All right? You know, and <laughs> you, I, I would imagine you're going to see more, you know, companies go that way because I don't know how in depth they'll get, but every company does something different, you know, and I- if it's in the drying barn or if it's you know out in the fields, yeah. Yeah, it adds to the experience. Absolutely. It does. Yeah. It does Absolutely. So I think that's super cool. Yep. That's super cool. What do you have? One more. You have the PCA Town Hall, right? Uh, a couple of events. Oh. Um, well, one's a non-event and one's an event. Okay. So there is the... Um, True. The you still have time or are you knocking off? Yeah, I'm right here. Man. All right, cool. All right. <laughs> True, are you leaving? What are you doing? He's leaving soon. Oh. I know he's got a hot stop, but we're going. Yeah, no worries. Um, so, yes. So the PCA is having a virtual town hall. Yep. Uh, which is is pretty neat. Um, actually, so I'm going to go to another piece of news that's going to relate to this news. So today starts the ban from uh, bringing in Cuban products. Uh, President Trump just rolled out a, a new law or brought back an old ban for Cuban products. So we could bring in, I think it was up to $800 mm-hmm. worth of Cuban products. Uh, the ban actually starts today. So they're no longer allowing people coming back from Cuba to bring any amount. Of, there's no cap anymore. You just can't do it. And they even added um, some countries. Uh, I think it was uh, Mexico, because you can bring Cuban products from other places too. Uh, yeah. I have it here. Canada, the UK, and Mexico. So you can't even drive over the border to Canada anymore sure. to get Cubans. You can't bring them back. Sure. Um, so I am, I'm bringing that up because I'm assuming that's going to be discussed at the PCA. Part of what they were going to mention, uh, talk about there on their agenda, is they were bringing in legal counsel from the CRA and um, the PCA to talk about the recent ruling, uh, the government ruling on uh, from the tobacco industry about doing those um, the testing before they release the uh, the new lines okay. that we talked about. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be held on September 29th at 7 p.m. Um, I put the link in the show notes, so it will be part of the show notes. But you can go to the PCA website to register. Um, Jorge Padron, Carlos Fuente, and Rocky Patel are all going to be there as well speaking. So it sounds like a pretty cool event. Um, the non-event I was going to mention uh, was Cigars International has their Cigar Fest every year. Okay. Well, I want to. I, I have lots to say about the PCA. Oh, go thing. bring it. Okay. Even though I've never been to a show and all of that stuff, and I'm not liberty to talk about it. First of all, <laughs> pre- President Trump only put back the legislation that the Obama administration relaxed yep. back in 2015. So what happened was the Obama administration back in 2015 relaxed some of the Cuban restrictions. It was supposed to be a first step gesture to open up uh, dialogue to um, have trade. Uh, As we know that that there is an embargo. It's been going on. Um, But one of the things that had come up was Cuban's Cuba's, uh, work regulation laws under the Obama administration. And since that that came up under the Obama administration, um, you know, uh, that administration was beginning the dialogue to dictate how to um, treat work as better or how to treat work as better like like we do here in the United States. I'm using that all in a quote, right? Treat treat work as better. all he did was 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 put those restrictions. He brought it back. Yeah. He 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 put those back. Um, don't know if that's going to be a big game changer uh, there. Uh, as we know, who are, who are in the industry, um, we, you know, everyone has always uh, traveled uh, pre-COVID, and were able to uh, travel and get some Cubans and hang and and smoke them and do that. Yeah, you can't take them back here to the United States. Uh, however. Um, you know, I, I think that that's probably, you know, we we can't go into another country and dictate how they should run their workforce. Of course. And with that type of country and the way it's ran, we're not going to. Um, it, it, it is what it is. Uh, you know, seek pil- pilgrimage and, and, and hospice over here. Uh, become a legal uh, citizen here. There is a process. It's not that hard. And... Um, you can enjoy the fruits of labor here 
over there. I don't know if he did that because it was from a former administration and you get the whole DRR thing. And if there's a, a list of things, it just happens to coincide in our little corner of the world. Right. And, and you know, away it goes there. Because they were even at, under the Obama administration, Carnival Cruises was offering first um, cruises to, to, to Cuba. Cuba. And all of that stuff there too, which Brian's been to Cuba. Yeah, you know, Cuba. but but Brian's been to Cuba and and flew in and out of Cuba and uh, under actually it was Trump administration. It was only two years ago. Yeah, it was Trump administration. Yeah, yep, yeah. So I mean, you know, it's it's not it's a different country, right? But I mean, let's face it. I mean, um, if I can recall, I don't know a hundred percent if I'm accurate on this, but we're still gonna be. We were at one point the second largest buyers of Cuban cigars in the world, mm -hmm. you know, in the United States. I mean, people are still going to get them. People are going to want what they can't have, you know. So it's not going to stop no. the Cubans from falling. No, they were getting them before right. Obama I mean, loosened the ban. Yeah, so. yeah. Right. It, 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 it's, it's a mystique thing. It's a mystique thing, and I just think that it, 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 it just affects our corner of the world. And I wonder if that was just a, well, the D's put this in place, and I'm an R. And since you guys all go against me anyway, <laughs> let me just freaking just stop. I wonder if in other industries there have been other relaxations from previous administration, and and they did that. So there's a there is a little unconfirmed side note. I read it this morning uh, on a news blurb that came across. So I haven't had time to vet this yet, but there's unconfirmed that Nicaragua may also be on that list. That's a game changer. That's a huge that's a, game changer. That's a big game changer. <laughs> that's a huge game changer. So unconfirmed, 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 but I did read that somewhere this morning. That is an uh, interesting point. That should probably be tabled, uh, but we can all say a couple sentences about that. Um, I would imagine that that's going to be another FDA thing, and they're going to kick the can down the road. Yeah, because, I mean, listen, I mean, it, it, Nicaragua is – probably one of the mo one of the largest producers of cigars in the world right so i mean 95 percent of their country that's what they thrive on mm -hmm. their workforce their jobs everything and who's the biggest consumer of their cigars right united states right i mean that's yeah it's that and coffee but yeah, they also right, included coffee. rum too so th don't be surprised if it goes coffee rum it's well, actually three things, believe okay, it or not. What is it? The third one's kind of a weird one. So it's 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 alcohol. This is in regards to Cuba. Because this is back to Cuba. Yep. Alcohol, tobacco, and government uh, Cuban government run hotels, which the government runs a lot of hotels in Cuba. Mm -hmm. So for some reason they added hotels in there. Mm. That's going to be a renegotiation for a tax. I I think that's all that is. It's a renegotiation for a tax there. Um, you know to. Stockpile, see it where it's going. Right. Yeah. But we'll see. Cool. Drew, anything you want to add to that before we get into the tiki party? Ah, let's go with the tiki party. I'm still researching what he just said. Nicaragua. I got some people on text right now. <laughs> just doing I think, honestly, because that, that's a very hot topic. I mean, I'd love to be the first to, to spring to cover it, but I don't like to – I don't want to shoot – Start no, you want to research. I don't it. want to start shooting my mouth or with assumptions. I want to get a a vet. If we want to, what is this next week? We have an interview. Is next week the, the second? Yeah, yeah. So next week we have an interview. Maybe we can do that for the ninth if we can make that a goal. But yeah, talk about the uh, cigar international cigar fest. All right, tiki bar. It's tiki time. Yeah, it, it's not major news, but I mean, obviously, I think it's major news. No one's going to be surprised that Cigar Fest was canceled. A, a lot of cigar events have been canceled uh, this year due to COVID nineteen. Um, so, I mean, it was supposed to be held in PA on the sixteenth and seventeenth of October. They ended up canceling. They did the right thing. They're refunding people that had purchased tickets, or you can put that towards a 2021 ticket. Smart move. God yep. forbid. It, it, hopefully, it happens. Um, but the cool thing they did is, so it was a tiki themed, it was supposed to be a tiki themed event, right? And they had all this swag. And so what Cigars International did is, well, what the hell are we going to do with all this shit? Right. Right. <laughs> so they start, they decided they put it up at huge discounts on their website. You can get the door package, uh, which I picked out as one of my favorites, the door package, which is 99 bucks. You get 30 cigars. Um, you get a Drew Estate duffel bag. 
uh, a 40 count humidor, which according to the reviews I've been seeing, is the nicest humidor, because they, I guess they always give away a humidor at Cigar Fest. This is the nicest one that they've ever given. Um, so you get that for your 30 cigars. Uh, and then you get a beach towel, a car magnet, and a uh, tiki lighter. And then the coolest thing I saw. The lanyard? No, the lanyard. <laughs> get the hell out of here. The lanyard. <laughs> oh, the, the lanyard is pretty cool. It's a lanyard with a, a lay, a Hawaiian lay. Mm. No, it's the tiki ashtray. And if I encourage Stogie Geeks to go out, check it out. I've never seen anything like it. It's pretty neat. You put your cigar, It's shaped like a volcano. You put your um, your cigar. There's a cigar holder on the bottom, and the smoke comes out through the hole on top. It's pretty cool. So I've never seen anything like that. You can look at that's, like, that's like uh, Garofalo's. Yeah, that's like Dave's. You, it, it's a little statue. And you yeah, put no, the it's, cigar. Only, it's only this. It's maybe three inches yeah, high. No, I know, but the Dave Garofalo has one from United. Oh, okay. That you put the cigar in the feet. Yeah, yeah. And the smoke rises up, and it comes out the cigar. Oh, that's. Oh, see, that's great. I've never seen that. I got fantastic. one at the shop. Oh, I'll have to look at it. I'm going there right after. So. Yeah, I'll go. Uh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, that, that's cool. And you can buy these things individually, too, um, on the site. I don't, and this is uh, unsponsored. I just uh, I had done a little research on this. So I thought that was cool, though, that they did that. And that was like a 70% off uh, for that door package that they had. So they turned uh, lemon in, into uh, lemonade. I thought that was pretty cool they did that for the, uh, the people that like cigars on Cigars International. So. Did you talk about the beach towel? Did I say beach towel? They get a beach towel yeah, too. Beach towel. With a tiki nice. and cigar fest, it's pretty cool. I think, cool. honestly, listen. This uh, is enticing. Li- listen, right? <laughs> <laughs> jo- jo- Johnny, our producer, is like all over they this. They can right? hear me. Oh, okay. Cool. Right? <laughs> so, um, you know, no, seriously. It, honestly, like, you, you know, you got to look at it this way, right? You have an event. Obviously, everyone's year has changed. And you talk about pivoting. Just like you had to pivot through covid Right? Still pivoting. You're now. still pivoting, and you're still doing that there, and 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 whatnot. That I think it's a super cool way. I think a lot of cool, you're gonna have a lot of people. I guess they're gonna do an, uh, the online pot too. Like you can register. Yeah, there'll be a virtual thing. And there, yeah, I, I, that that'll be the day Zoom crashes. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying it there. If they get all that participation and all of that stuff, uh, what is that? September 29th, off the top of my head, is that right? Uh, well, it's scheduled for the no, 16th and the 17th. I'm sorry, 16th, 17th of, of, of October. Uh, of October. It's 29th was the um, the PCA thing, right? Gotcha. Yep. Yeah. So. You know, I, I I think it's cool. I, uh, I did share it on uh, social media, just in case story geeks want to get involved. And I think it's a great way for you to be exposed to thirty different cigars. Uh, there, get some swag. You might meet some new friends. Do that there. Heck, you could even probably you know it, 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 here in the Northeast if it's a nice day. It's supposed to be uh, you know you, I know a lot of people who use that as like a guys' weekend. Go in there and do that there. We'll get a bunch of people there. Set up. Set up a monitor and 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 chill out and do it that way. I mean, you know, it's, we should it, talk about a Stogie Geeks herf. A Stogie Geeks herf? Yeah, do a nah. Zoom. Everyone just sits around, smokes, nah. and looks at each other on everybody, the screen. Everybody, everybody can, <laughs> everybody can do, everybody can do their their herfs and do their things. We're 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 That's we're, a no. we're, That's we're, a no. we're extremely <laughs> we're extremely busy here at Stogie Geeks. So you know, we're 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 <laughs> testing a lot of liquor and we're we're busy. Drew, do you have time to do a herf? When you want to do a rep? Yeah, it'll be at 3 o'clock in the morning <laughs> with our bandwidth. Texas time. <laughs> Texas time. <laughs> 2 o'clock in the morning, our time. All right? 3 o'clock in the morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That sounds about right. I'll be in my pajamas. I'll be in my pajamas. I'll be talking like this because my kid's sleeping. Hey, you know. <laughs> we'll finally get him to shut up. Yeah, we're not doing a story. <laughs> we're, not, we're, not, we're not doing a story, Geeks, huh? if, if if you, you know. If you don't have a temperature and you want to come down to the studio, email me at joehstoygeeks.com and we'll put a mask on you and you can sit and chill. But you check know, your temperature. I, I'm all, I'm, I'm all good because everybody's doing the harass. It's a little, it's a little cliche for me, but you know, I'll be honest. I like them. I've done a few. Hashtag COVID times. Next topic. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any more topics? No, I'm done. You're done. All right. <laughs> awesome, Brian. I want to ask you a couple questions, but. Just, just a couple questions in there. Um, uh, like, you're, you own a business. You're involved in two other businesses as well. And for the sake of the show, we're going to st- stick on the Churchill Smoke Shop and Lounge Umbrella, right? It, a- as a business owner, and I am one as well, you're always going to be thinking of, like, future. Mm-hmm. Future. One year, two year. 
tomorrow, <laughs> especially here with the COVID rules, right? Right, right? Tomorrow, what can and can I do, right? Well, what do you think the future holds for brick and mortars? Because I've asked this with other brick and mortars who, who we've interviewed, and you can go out as far as any timeline you want, five, ten years, whichever. But, like, you know, uh, with, like, for example, New York just up the tobacco tax again. Right. Um, you know, they, they have some underwriting in there that, you know, it's, it's, it's percent of the wholesale. It's not the retail value and all of that stuff with the ever changing landscape, keep COVID out of it. Cause mm -hmm. that's another discussion, right? With the ever changing landscape, with the ever changing new rules, what you can do, what you can't do, where you're going with business, what, what, what are some of your pivot points and what are some of your future that you see for the industry? Um, well, first, probably I would answer that with the FDA. Okay. You know, you mentioned brick and mortars. If the FDA gets what they want, um, which we're looking pretty good right now than we did two years ago, mm -hmm. um, everybody would be carrying the same stuff. The boutique market would be gone, pretty much. I mean, unless you know, the there was a lot of money, you know, being dished around. They were talking huge money to get those lines um, predicated. Predicated. And, uh, I think it would be gone innovatively. I think a lot of the bigger companies would start to suck up some of the blends. Right. Right. You know. Um, and then, like I said, I mean, if everybody's carrying the same the same brands, you're not going to have that many shops because. Yep. What differentiates us is the different brands of cigars, right, um, in the atmosphere. But with that said, definitely the FDA um, could definitely change things. Um, the, well, I mean, here in Rhode Island, we have so many per capita. I think we have the most lounges per capita. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, five, ten years, I mean, Rhode Island, they've been trying to put smoking out of business for umpteen years. They don't like us. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, with the New York thing, 75%, um, they've already been at that 75% before. It right. went down to 28. So, the, you know, the customers know what's coming. They supported their brick and mortars before with 75%. I think we'll still be around. Mm -hmm. I do. Cool. I, I, I think so, too. I just think what form, like, my vision five, ten years from now, is we walk into a brick and mortar like, like yours, and it's menu-driven. And the worker has to get the stick. We're not going to have to. We're, they're they're going to try, because they're really into that, that barrier of entry mm. to have access. And I really picture it being like a menu because when I've done some travel in here with Security Weekly, I've seen it in other... Um, bigger bigger places where you know you might not be able to walk into the humidor it's a menu mm -hmm. and you say hey i'll have the padrone anniversary 20 okay sure how do you want that cut and then it, it just they cut it and then then the transaction is there i picture it going as far as that i hope it doesn't get to that because i go back to what brian said you have you have to see it feel it touch it right i mean yeah, how am i, I going to learn new sticks if i have to pick from a menu we do that online. So you test online. No, 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 no. We, we, we pick from a menu online. We can't touch. Because right. I agree with you wholeheartedly, right? I'm not playing devil's advocate. I'm not, I'm not into that. It's a waste of show, show time, right? Um, you, you know, the, we do that online. Like we, we, as consumers, we're educated enough about Brand X. So we go and find Brand X, either online or brick and mortar, right? But we some of them some brand x is so good at marketing brand x that we buy a sight unseen happens all the time yeah i mean i guess for me there's there's a little bit of that but for me i won't buy a stick online that i haven't actually had before really yeah i, I don't want that'll change i, I, I don't want <laughs> i don't want to order something online that comes and i freaking hate it you know what i mean why? Then you give it to your friends. <laughs> <laughs> I have a special drawer for that. Awesome. Jews, anything else you want to add to this segment? <clears throat> Let me clear my throat here real quick. No, I would just, again, it, it, 
just to just to cap on what everybody else is saying. I mean, the this this the the uh, holy crap. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, what I was gonna say was uh, it just eluded my brain again. <laughs> okay, think about it, Nelson. Is there anything you want to add to Come the back. segment? No, this is great, Brian. I, thanks for coming on. This was really cool. I love talking to. I mean, I have the opportunity to talk to Brian anyway. <laughs> uh, he ignores me a lot, but yeah, other than that, uh, here he can't. He can't ignore me. So I got to ask true. questions. It was great. That's no, true. but seriously, thanks for the for for answering all our questions. Yeah, Brian. Thanks, thanks for coming. Don't be a stranger to the show. Thanks. All right, absolutely, Drew. Final words. Yes. Final words. Uh, Brian, it was nice meeting you. I can't nice wait to get down to Rhode Island and, and visit your uh, your establishment there. I'm looking at all the beautiful pictures and all the wonderful. Uh, the humidor looks nice and looks like a great place to really uh, catch up with some new friends. So yeah, it's definitely family down. family oriented. I mean, we, we're we're one big happy family. Yeah, so it really, uh, like I said, just looks really nice. And uh, you know, that's one thing that I always tell people. You know, go out and and if you're ever in another state or city, just just seek out your brick and mortar. Check it out. I mean, it's it's pretty neat. It's a, it's kind of like, a, you know, like people have this thing about wanting to go to every baseball stadium in the United States. Mine is, I want to visit as many brick and mortars as I can just to pop in, check it out, you know, enjoy a stogie while I'm there and move on, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Except for the bunk ones. With that being said, Story Geeks, <laughs> when we come back, Nelson's got a couple of things he's going to talk about. I got a couple of things we're going to talk about. Maybe Drew will stick around. We will see. We're going to take a short break. <laughs> 